There have been many iconic villains. But as soon as the world met this one, he was unforgettable. But why? Call it. It's not only the obvious details of his character, it's also what he represents. Let's peel back the layers of Anton Chigurh to see how this was done. Will you hold still, please, sir? For more videos on screenwriting, directing and cinematography, all you have to do is subscribe and turn on notifications. No Country for Old Men is a 2005 novel written by Cormac McCarthy. The screenplay, written by the Coen brothers, is a faithful adaptation of the novel. So our discussion today is about a character created by McCarthy, performed by Javier Bardem, under the direction of the Coens. Do you know where I'm going? Why would I care where you're going? In order to assess what makes Shiger so compelling as a character, Let's talk about how they are created through a process called characterization, which Robert McKee describes as the sum of all observable qualities of a human being, everything knowable through careful scrutiny. Age, education, clothes, values, everything. But for Shiger, his characterization is intentionally left out of the novel to keep the viewer on edge. McCarthy keeps the reader really completely off balance in terms of who that character is. He, he describes him physically almost not at all. He is rooted in ambiguity. So let's start with what we can observe about him, starting with character details. Chigurh's most curious physical feature is his haircut. I need you to step out of the car, sir. It's an odd choice that hairstylist Paul Leblanc modeled after a typical look from the Crusades. It was a dangerous time, and we wanted to make Javier timeless and dangerous at first sight. Do you see me? Then there is his costume. Here's costume designer Mary Zofrez on visualizing Chigurh. He's a fish out of water, a criminal that was from another part of the country or another country entirely. He has a denim jacket, but it's not like one that anybody else would wear. And he's a little bit more in with the times. His collar is a little bit bigger. He's got like one of those groovier belts. It's not a Western belt. And then I knew that he should have a boot that was almost like a weapon and with a toe and a very slanted heel and just sort of made you kind of cringe if you look at them. And so we actually made them out of alligator and they're like bumpy and gross and pointy and they could kill someone. One of Anton's signature weapons is a captive bolt stunner. Typically used to slaughter cattle, the device dehumanizes his victims, illustrating a cold disregard for human life. It's also a silent weapon, just like his firearms fitted with silencers. Together, these reveal an efficient and disconcerting killer. There is also a mystery around his origins. Chigurh's accent is hard to place, but it certainly isn't the local twang of West Texas. You need to talk to me. I don't need to talk to you. I think you do. As Bardem explains, I worked really hard to get rid of my Spanish accent. It doesn't belong to anyone special. We tried to neutralize the accent as much as we could. His name also suggests that he is clearly from somewhere else. His name's Chigurh. Sugar. Chigurh, Anton Chigurh. The first thing I asked Cormac when I met him was, what, what kind of name is that? And, right. and he said it's, it's a name that was intentionally untraceable, sort of ethnically or in terms of nationality or any of the rest of it. All of these details help put us on edge because he can't be placed. He's unfamiliar. I know she was crazy when I saw you sitting there. Other than his outward appearance, his actions also contribute to this ambiguity. For one, Shigurh kills almost everyone he encounters. 
almost. Take it. He kills two people in the first five minutes, but then lets the gas station attendant live based on a coin toss. Call it. Call it, yes. Heads then. Well done. It's the randomness of who he kills and who he lets live that keeps us guessing. Where does it work? Did you not hear me? We can't give out no information. Every time Shiga meets a new character, anything can happen and we're locked in suspense. There's also his relentlessness. Like the Terminator or Michael Myers, Shiger is a killing machine. There is even a subtle sound design choice to reinforce this idea. Listen carefully as he strangles the deputy. You can hear a train passing. Here's supervising sound editor Skip Livesay on that choice. We had to find a way to give Shiger his normal theme with sound instead of using a piece of music. So we started experimenting with that distant thunder rumble and that led to the train motif. The train then is an audible symbol for Shiger as a direct and unstoppable force. But there are also elements that make him almost human. Inside Llewellyn's trailer, he sits with a bottle of milk, which is an odd choice for this character. But what's perhaps even more unsettling is that he doesn't drink it. He just sits with it, like an android pretending to be human. And finally, what little dialogue he has in the film only adds to his ambiguity. He delivers cryptic threats. Well, look, I need to know what I stand to win. Everything. How's that? You stand to win everything, call it. And speaks in enigmatic phrases. If the rule you followed brought you to this, of what use was the rule? So what does all this add up to? As intriguing as these details are, they are only part of the reason why Anton Chigurh is a great character. He also perfectly represents the theme of No Country for Old Men. To explain this, we must first understand the function of theme in storytelling. John Truby explains why theme is so important. A great story is not simply a sequence of events or surprises designed to entertain an audience. It is a sequence of actions with moral implications and effects designed to express a larger theme. On a plot level, No Country for Old Men is a classic thriller about characters chasing a bag of money. But on a thematic level, there's a lot more going on. It's about a character confronting a very arbitrary, violent, brutal world and you have to see it in the in the movie in order to understand anything I think about what the characters are what they're about and what they're confronting and what they're trying to make sense of. The character in question is Sheriff Bell whose main function in the story is to express this theme. He shares these existential concerns about this new form of violence and the difficulty he has understanding it. Listen to the opening monologue. The crime you see now it's hard to even take its measure. It's not that I'm afraid of it. I always knew you had to be willing to die to even do this job. But I don't want to push my chips forward and go out and meet something I don't understand. Bell pines for the past. You want a cup? For simpler times. And he feels outmatched and overwhelmed by this new senseless violence that he doesn't understand. Money and the drugs. What's it mean? What's it leading to? And that's exactly what Shiger represents. Senseless, 
and inexplicable violence. He's the one character in the book that actually departs from a certain sense of realism. He's both sort of real in the book and an idea. A human, but also an idea. The threat that Bell perceives is ambiguous, mysterious, unknowable. Just like Shiger. From his hair and choice of weapons to his random killings, he is the embodiment of this senseless and inexplicable violence. Yet, I won't tell you you can save yourself, because you can't. There are many layers that combine to make Anton Shiger such an unforgettable antagonist. And this is the lesson for writers looking to craft similarly effective characters, especially villains. You can make your villain cruel, or weird, or scary. But if you can also position them at the center of your story's theme, that's when truly great storytelling is born. If you're going to write the next Anton Chigurh, you're going to need the one right tool. StudioBinder's script writing software is just the ticket. By the way, Anton, where are you from? What business is it of yours? Where I'm from? Friendo? Uh, never mind. Uh, that's all for now. See you in the next one, I hope. If you haven't yet, subscribe to Stay in the Loop for more Filmmaking Techniques videos. And don't forget to enable notifications 